I mean, you, you gotta here. make me look good. I mean, okay. Like, I represent <laughs> a lot of people But you look here, crazy, right? voice. It's fine. Oh, but it's <laughs> the internet, man. You don't, you don't, <laughs> the internet. You don't outsource <laughs> looking good. That's uh, with, with the, the average opinion. That's All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can bring plan. it back for uh, Game 3, because the Game 3 draft is uh, underway with bands aplenty. Mm -hmm. um, all looking pretty similar so far. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, there we go. Well, one thing okay. we, I guess we didn't really no like notice or mention about is like this Wisp hero, right? Yeah. Throughout many tournaments, it's always like this hidden ban versus some teams, like yeah. uh, Liquid, yeah. EG now. Yeah. You just ban them. You don't care how they're performing, how they're doing anything. You know it's one of their comfort picks, and you just have to get rid of it. I guess like we sort of just glance over it since we just see it so often. Yeah. But it's kind of important that when you play against a team like EG, you don't have two bans. You have one ban, because you have to ban this Wisp out. Or at least that's how you feel like you have to... Uh, in draft. The, the hard part is too watching the games. Like even when it does occasionally let through, I feel like most of the time they lose with it. They're like, oh wow, I finally got this. I haven't actually played this in like six scrims. Yeah, See, that, this does happen for sure. One of the key differences though is that now that split push has kind of been buffed a little bit, I see the Wisp hero actually being much more effective, mm -hmm. and that's why I think they're especially somebody like Crit, and right. especially like somebody like EG. I, I think it's much more much more of a fearful hero than in this current it, meta. It, it's also that. Um even if they haven't played with it, probably you haven't played against it either. That's true. And that could offset all of that, and then it's just chaos everywhere. So. It, it definitely changes how you have to think about the mid game. It's like right. you're always playing against a Monkey King, kind of. There's always that hero that might be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Wisp definitely could be there if he's ready. So we see the first pick, Magnus, by EG. I think how they're thinking right now is, okay, guys, we won the first game. was pretty close still. You know, maybe something we did here and there was good, but strategy was shaky. Second game, they lost late game. And third game, they're like, okay, we're going to pick the king of late game. We're going to pick Magnus right now. It's a hero that Faceless might pick themselves. He's a strong team fighter for, for us. And let's just play the game out like this. If they had Magnus anti-mage last game, I don't see how they could have lost. It's but actually wondering if Crit is going to try and change it up this time and pick, you know, some of the cores, this, uh, cores earlier on and try and figure that out instead right. of, uh, you know, well, just... There's a block pick from Faceless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Um, except for the fact that it would have to be either RTZ or uh, uh, yeah, Sumo Planet. That's true. So maybe yeah. not so much. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to pick their melee core here. That way it doesn't get banned out. Like, yeah. what, whatever they pick here, is it so integral that they grab it before it gets potentially banned? So yeah, I could. But it's basically like Jug Troll. If, if, if it's like Lifestealer, Jug, then I can see it happening because they're heroes that don't really get screwed with. But mm. because of the f Prophet, they might rethink that because Prophet is actually good. Alani against Juggernaut and Lifestealer. They don't really have a way to it's get on top of them it's easily. Not, it's not a crit drafting thing either. He hates carry mids first two picks. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I like the Ricky. Um, obviously, everybody points back to the one game where Boboka was just, you know, he had the three Aquila ring and, and Magnus. It, the percentage uh, uh, the percentage damage ends up adding so much to that hero. Yeah. And, and it just becomes another support that's actually going to be able to do some I, damage. I would like to mention, okay, play the... No, 7.4k average game. <laughs> All right. There was a Ricky and a Magnus on the enemy team together. Okay. Their troll warlord died and they took the fight and they RP'd us. And we're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's just a Magnus RP. Nothing could, no nothing could possibly go wrong. This Ricky blinks in, uses ultimate on four of us, and we're all just dead. He literally just got a rampage. Wow. Right off that fight. And I'm like, okay, some support four position Ricky with just one defusal blade can just... Yeah. One shot us with his ultimate on a mag RP. So and I think it solves that's the empower Ricky combo. Yeah. This solves also a little bit of the problem we saw in the last game, where the Ricky could not find any farm. At least if now you start empowering him, now he can start taking jungle, start being more effective. And he can split push lanes, push lanes faster. Like uh, we saw him do it a couple times last game. He had to use like blink strike to push lanes. He'd kill the range creeps first because that's the, the the most applicable lane. <laughs> but it's like, dude, you're 40 minutes in. The best you can do is kill range range creeps first. It, it's a pretty good tactic though when you kill is, just yeah. one range creep. Right? In within one minute's time, the enemy is gonna have like a quad wave in front of their buildings. Yep. Even mm -hmm. if you just kill one range creep. Because yep. that's how the creep equilibri equilibriums work. It, it definitely works really well, but you definitely prefer to just have a monkey king and like nuke the wave with your spell right. and walk away. Yeah, instantly. it gives you Two more seconds. farm too, right? Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, it's faster lane, I'll push for vision, whatnot. But yeah, so faces picking Furion. One thing I do wanna mention is like them picking the nature's prophet is like it just goes to show the different variety of teams that are actually playing this hill. Mm. That goes to show how highly valued it is already. And it's just the beginning of the tournament. Yeah, yeah I, I think the damage buff 
really, really just changed that hero. It, it, it's so strong in lane now. I, I feel like it, it, it was going to be natural, and especially with all the split push bonuses. Right. And actually, if you think about it, the Warlock, Fatal Bonds into a Nature's Prophet ult, that could be a very good combo. It's like, you know, Marana Starfall. Sure, it's not as much damage as a double Starfall, but this is still a combo that could hurt a lot. Uh, Monkey King is still in the game as well. Did not get banned. Wow, that's a pretty big surprise. Although they did get to pick Ricky as a response after the Prophet pick, so maybe they mm -hmm. felt that Ricky was safer versus Monkey uh, right. rather than Monkey. Right. Although I haven't seen Monkey King in power yet, but that's got to be cool, right? Does it work with the ultimate? Uh, no. I hope not. <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> that's why you scared me for a you second. You get four Janatas and then start cleaving with it. I've definitely seen it, but it's... It's probably Ricky might be a little stronger oh, yeah, you know, if you, if you get for the RP plays at least. But yeah. Monkey King definitely still the hero of the tournament or whatever you want to say, like or the hero that people prioritize mm -hmm. the highest overall, average wise. So what's interesting to me too is these both these drafters ended up banning out the mid heroes during the the second yeah. phase here. Yeah, they, they really want to limit those pools. Lena Invoker. It's kind of weird because like. Lina and Volker are Sumail's heroes, so this makes me think that the Magnus is going to be played by Sumail. Hmm. Like, I, I'm already thinking that way, because I don't see how you can just ban your own heroes, and maybe you're not left with anything. So they might be, like, already restricting themselves to Sumail just playing the Magnus. Yeah, the only other thing I could see there is potentially a certain strat that they figured out that they, they personally like, and if they got this Magnus Ricky opening, they, they might more feel comfortable with Sumail going on something a little bit different. Yeah, the break is a little bit different. It's a pretty good tempo hero, good at catching Ricky. Just spot him and charge him and yep. dust him when you get there. Um, Prophet's good against the two. And since you have Nature's Prophet, you don't really have like this offlaner who can just go in for you. So Spearbreaker being that hero who can constantly just give you vision and charge in. And you have the global presence. If you charge someone from far, the Prophet can always TP with him. And you're most likely going to kill them. And if you're playing against evil geniuses who love to split push, and Arteezy loves to farm on his own somewhere, then he's going to hate a hero like Spearbreaker. Mm. And this also means if they would pick like Juggernaut or Lysiter, they have something through BKB on That's a true. very mm -hmm. low cooldown. So I, I really, really like the Spearbreaker pick there. Do you guys think we'll potentially see an aggro again? Just looking at, you know, Evil Geniuses with Ricky and Crystal Maiden kind of uh, lackluster laners, you know, especially early on. Uh, what was that again? Uh, it, do you think Faces will aggro try? I, I don't think so with a Spearbreaker. I feel like he's kind of weak aggro try. He really needs two to become at least more useful, but... Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's always a possibility, but EG's draft looks a lot safer this way by putting at least one core in the front rather than the Ricky CM. I, I like what they're doing here. Well, if they do go aggro, it's mostly dependent on what Evo Genius's other uh, uh, side, the side laner is. Right. Because if you don't have a good matchup in that side lane, then you don't want to go aggro, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want the enemy off laner to ever free farm because that's how it's most likely going to be the tempo controller. Mm -hmm. And he's going to probably come into your trial and kill you. So... Well, we're just going to have to wait and see. Cause, but it is still a potential since they do have a Ricky Crystal Maiden support. Yeah. Again, <laughs> feels, feels like weak. Uh, the first game. <clears throat> I, I actually think Evo Geniuses are feeling a little bit pressured right now, knowing that uh, the enemy supports are slightly stronger. Oh, Terra Blade. Yeah, like, uh, I Faceless is doing a really good job setting up for what EG is likely going to grab, which is probably going to be like a melee physical core that probably gets BKB. I feel like that's why they grab Spirit Breaker as well. <laughs> yeah. They can ulti through BKB. And now Terrorblade is one of the best like anti-melee physical core carry counters. I mean, he's pretty, like, I guess you can classify him as an anti-carry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't, like, you can think about any carries, the TB is going to be good. I guess they're like anti mage, life stealer, juggernaut. Yeah. He counters all these guys. So he's so the the best physical damage dealer by far. Oh yeah. Much. I mean, yeah. they, they have to do play around metamorphosis, but I I still think you know most TB players are going to be able to do that. And what, another thing you can actually do is uh, bring him out of whatever lane he is and and give that farm to one of your fours or fives. Right. And right now the most most of the counters TB are like, I guess somewhat supports and EG already picked them. Yep. Pick Crystal Maiden. Pick Ricky. Now they can't pick like a Wyvern, for example, or even a Lina, I got who it. can spam out the illusions. Brewmaster. For who? Dispel magic, kills all the treants. Does it kill summons anymore? I can't remember. It'll nuke the illusions, though, won't it? TB's illusions? I believe it'll take out the illusions. Give them empower, grab them damage perks. <laughs> yeah. oh, Guaranteed also, crit. I would like to mention TB is still 7-0 in this tournament. Okay. 
So he's a situational carry pick though, and once well, if ooh, wow. that's surprising. If he starts getting okay. popular though, he'll, his win rate will definitely go down. Yeah. But. So looking at the TB pick, they already decided that you know, all right, we cannot have this Magnus mid. Like we actually need one more hero to be able to kill the Terra Blade. Because if you look at all the off laners, they're not really good versus TB that Universe typically plays. So now they have Magnus for Ospam, and now they have Queen of Pain to be able to take some team fights. So it was a pretty good pick. I, I feel like, like Spirit Breaker is decent against her though. She, he is, for sure. But they still needed something, right? Like if we think about yeah. what they can have for magical damage team fighting, it's quite limited. Maybe a Puck who's also good against Spirit Breaker, but yeah. they played Puck last game, maybe they don't feel that good about it. That's true. I thought Smell looked really good on that hero. I, I would I thought he was very confident and knew what he wanted to do right. that whole entire game. But if you think about like going into a game and like losing like after losing it, you're gonna feel like, guys, let's just not play what we already did. Yep. Like you, you they might not be sure as to why they lost. So I mean, yes. he, he didn't have a terrible game, he's ten four six in yeah. the game. On yeah. a losing side as well. Right. So he might feel bad because of that, right? Yeah. He did so well, yet he still felt like he couldn't just win out win this game for his team. Yeah. Uh, with e the hero that he had. EG is also a team that really likes to play around the team. Oh, they work together. Spectre. Oh, yeah. RTC is going to get aggro try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No doubt about that. Uh, so, I like it though. That's true. It's good. I I'm not so sure how the Magnus Nature's Prophet uh, matchup works because I actually think Magnus is going to be fine. Especially when Nature's Prophet leaves the lane. And if Magnus gets free farm in this game, it could be very scary to play against a Blink Mana Boots Magnus who's going to run around, empower the Spectre, and then t uh, try to defend towers with this team. So they're going to have Shockwave, they're going to have Crystal Nova, and it's going to be a little bit difficult for Faces to just push. But one thing that um, Faces do have is the Terror Blade's uh, Mirror Images against Spectre. Sure. If he ever haunts, he uses the Mirror Images. There's so many illusions that they're going to actually kill the other illusions. Hmm. So. Does it spawn illusions from illusion heroes too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Storm. Storm spirit. Whew. Okay. Uh, you know, I I, I like can it. I can see this working because yeah. the um, storm versus Quap. There's a point in the game where the storm can just kill a Quap. Like he's kind of weak in the lane. Yeah. The storm versus the Quap, but uh, with the spear breaker, I think there's gonna be a very high chance that Quap can feed. Biggest mm -hmm. thing for me is I see a really heavy lack of lockdown on EG right now to be yeah. able to just to take down that storm spirit. If he gets out of control, the game is completely over. Right. But this do, the uh, EG's lineup does remind me of like the first game where Liquid played against um, Thunderbirds with the Spectre. Like this hero is kind of really surprising. Yep. Mm. Okay. Lots and lots of damage. Let's yeah. get some uh, predictions. We're going to start this time instead of with Conrad. We're going to start <laughs> with Steven this time. Me? Yeah. Because <laughs> then that way maybe Kai can get one right. You can't get what the guaranteed correct with? answer. <laughs> 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 I gotta go the opposite. Okay, very yeah? quickly, because we need to go okay, over the commentators. Um, Which way do you want to go? All right, you know what? I'll go with Faceless. Let's okay. Let's do it. Come I, on. I was going to go Faceless. I, I really like the lineup in their draft. feels really, really strong okay, this game. Okay, two for Faceless. Uh, I'll, I'll go EG. I was really unsure, <laughs> but I want to be the contrarian. They usually get their answer right. <laughs> I like the co-op. I want to see it work. I'm not confident, but I'll pick EG. Okay. One for EG, two for Faceless. We'll find out where the prediction game lies after our third and final game. It is the final game of the day as well as we head into round two, second leg. Let's head back to our commentary team. Absolutely, Rev. Final game, as he said. We want excitement. We're going to get excitement. There's a, there's, a, there's a Storm Spirit. There's a Queen of Pain. We've got two mids. They're going to be looking for the big plays. We've got some big kind of late game potential uh, safe laners. The Spectre, the Terror Blade. As we heard on the panel, uh, they were a little uh, doubtful on EG's lineup. They, they did favor what Faces had. Do you agree, or do you feel that they're missing out something that the EG have in mind? It's always very volatile, this Spectre pick. Can be punished along the lane, but if you can get away with it, you can reap the re rewards at the same time. So Faceless have tools to try and shut it down. Some very uh, aggressive laning potential from a Nature's Prophet. The Spirit Breaker, Warlock can be a very strong laning hero. So... Maybe tough for Arteezy. He's going to have to pick and choose where he looks to lane. It seems like he wants to go off lane. Perhaps thinking that they can, he can dodge a tough lane like a Nature's Prophet plus Warlock. Even just a Nature's Prophet alone can be quite troublesome to deal with. So it seems that it's going to be like an aggro tri lane from EG, so to speak. But Faceless may be wary of this. Like It seems unclear where either team's going with their lanes. Ice 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 actually is going to be geared up to go bottom now. 
And I guess is, I mean, what that, that you feel is the lane match of the EG one? This is what EG want, yes. They want the Spectre plus CM against the Nature's Prophet. Um, it's not necessarily a disaster for Faceless. I don't think EG wins the lanes because of that, but they don't want Spectre against like an aggro tri lane. Warlock plus a Metamorph TB um, plus Spirit Breaker is a big problem for Spectre to farm against. But Faceless, another swap, Ice and Sice yep. now heading top. Uh, with the lanes. Down. Yeah, they, they saw our TZ down there, so yep. yeah, absolutely. Just making sure that they get the, the lanes that they want faceless. Uh, we saw a sentry drop down, but uh, yeah, just out of range of the observer of, of faceless. So they've got that vision down there. Yep. EG did get four ru uh, three runes, but true. Yep. Not, no, those banner runes are a bit overrated. They're 100 gold. It's nice, but it's not like a, a game changer by any means. Doesn't mean our TZ gets a poor man shield at level one. When there's harass coming in, that can make a bit of a difference. It's uh, this mid lane matchup as well. Jabs, Storm versus Samael, Queen of Pain. I, I mean, I imagine this is a lane where you, Samael should have the edge, right? Samael, you know, you got to, you got to back, you, yeah, you, back you, the boy in a one v one, and it's a one v one where, yeah, Queen of Pain does do very well at early levels. The Shadow Strike harass is something very easy to get onto a Storm Spirit with his smaller range. So yes, uh, definitely backing Sumail here, and mechanically is a, a scary player to go up against for any mid laner. Jabs, yeah, absolutely being harassed back. Samael getting some early pressure in on the tower. There will be a charge onto Samael. Uh, he does have that blink. Just and trying to secure uh, some last hits for his storm. Yeah. Trying to do his best to, to harass him back. And it's going to be interesting to see how much XY can get done in these early stages in the breaker. A hero that we don't, yep. don't see too much. Um, some of the faces have picked up in the past in certain situations. And uh, certainly heroes that it, it does have a good answer for. Oh, Korea! XY's got the slime. Is he going to get the slime? Not oh. quite enough. Yeah, not quite enough damage. He's got level 2, though. It's a bit of a jerk move, but at the same time, it's also necessary. He leeches a ton of the Storm's XP, but the end result is he's level 2. And level 2 Spirit Breaker is a completely different hero from level 1 Spirit Breaker. So life is going to be a lot more enjoyable for XY. As a result, he's... Is he still looking for this courier? No, he's just going for a bounty rune. The courier's actually tucked in the trees at mid, interestingly Death enough. Bounty. But unlikely that he is wary of this. Uh, lanes at the moment. The uh, mid lane, CS even. Uh, down towards the, the bottom, looking at obviously the, this, this lane where we have both position ones going head to head in terms of farm. RTZ with a slight lead, thanks to that early bit of backup. But he's actually being left on his own now. Um, as yep. the supports of EG, Zai and Crit looking elsewhere. Right. Zai trying to help Samael out a little bit in return after XY was putting that pressure on early in the mid lane. You know, he's, he's learned from Sumail at the DAC All-Star match, offlane Spectre, won the international it, team it the match. Out. You know, it's, it's a game-winning strategy. I think Sumail had a fantastic start that game, if I remember correctly. So, you know, it's, it's all according to plan. Uh, getting, <laughs> getting the solo XP, it's yeah. pretty nice. You know, if you could get a good timing on that six, say, an early horn... Uh, with uh, especially heroes like the Queen of Pain on the map, can certainly result in a kill. Yep. Yeah, it seems fairly quiet for now. The aggression's going to come out of Ice 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 and the, the Nature's Prophet. He's going to be the one who can TP around, tip the balance of these lanes in his team's favor with a surprise appearance. Whether that's going to be like a TP towards mid, bottom, we'll have to wait and see, or perhaps even we see supports rotate towards top, but Storm is just getting constantly bullied. Even back in the jungle now, just does not want to lane against this Queen of Pain with the two points in Shadow Strike. XY did come in with a charge onto Zai, but no further follow up than he looked for. Uh, at least just forcing that Ricky back yep. and trying to open up a bit more space yet again for the Nature's Prophet, Ice Ice Ice, conti to continue to farm. Greed is the name of the game so far, and it has been. Like, it's been a jokingly called the, the, the Midas Major, you know. It's a lot of farm going on. We're seeing split push coming back in. We're seeing. Teams looking just to play in much greedier fashion, and that's no different so far with this game. A kind of abandoned mid lane, but that's kind of all Jabs can do. He just has no way of laning against this Sumail Queen of Pain. Two points in Shadow Strike enough to scare him out of the lane. Does TP back in now with full HP and some Spirit Breaker support, but he may, it's going to quickly get pushed out. Charge onto Sumail, making sure that Sumail doesn't have any RNG thoughts of going in aggressive. Oh, he's, oh, got, he's, he's got the bash. Is it going to be enough? Ooh. Not quite. There was yeah, natural miss. There luckily. was as well. <laughs> that would have brought Samael down very low. XY actually got the haste and again with another bash. Oh, XY gets the first blood and he's going to get himself back out to safety. No problem at all. 
Not sure if Sum Sumel perhaps didn't see the haste room because the charge is misleading. You you don't realize you don't know his movement speed when he's charging in. You don't realize he has a haste. So I think that haste actually caught oh, him. Look by at surprise. these TPs down bottom. EG looking to punish this aggressive push from Faces onto Black straight away. They'll bring down the Terra Blade. They'll look towards Ice 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 as well. He'll try for the TP out. Is he gonna make it? Oh, he just does. The damage not quite there from EG uh, to bring down a second, but at the least they do get Black on his Terra Blade. Yeah, that was with the ice 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 showing up so not quite the result faces were hoping for gives universe some alone time up top it's gonna go for, for the early arcane boots it looks like no no greed from him no midas's arcane's into blink a much more standard build from the eg offlaner and we'll see what the the plan is for faceless metamorphosis down they don't really have any ability to further pressure this tower good defense coming out from eg down there Charge onto Samal. Are they going to make another attempt? Are we going to see the RNG pull through again? That's the question. Oh, look at the bash there. Zai looking to come in with a bit of a counter reaction. And with crit, they will punish the Storm Spirit. So securing Samal the kills here in this mid lane. Oh, we got dust. Yeah, X Y. And you can hear the bash. There you go. Absolutely bang on Q. X Y will find something again. Ice, ice, ice. Not quite level six. That's going to be the probably big level. One of the big levels for Faceless, able to just throw that in globally. Top the team out. It's a nice little like boost in damage. Another charge coming in X Y is really amping it up here in the early game. Let's we'll see if he can get away with this. Huh? So has to be careful. There's a bit of a reaction coming from EG's eye and and Uni, of course, ready to move over. So he'll back himself away. And two two at the moment, six minutes in. Farm are pretty even on the board. Slight edge in terms of CS for the, the cause of Faceless. We're having just just a little bit of a better time in the lanes, but very, very close in these early stages between both sides. Yep. Get a quick D ward on a fresh observer ward from Zai on that cliff, so they maintain some good vision control. Eyes on the Ricky and see the next charge coming in. Bottom lane, Sonic Wave gang. Black goes down. He's on the receiving oh, this. Oh I saw, I saw with a beautiful ultimate there. And they're going to get yeah, Sumail also. as well. Great charge, giving the vision they needed. There was no way for Sumail to juke it in. I saw, I saw rocks up. He doesn't even have like the phase boost. He's just happy with the magic wand, brown boots, rushing a Midas. Getting involved early on. And that's a, a big couple of kills going his way. Skyrockets him to the top of the net worth charts. And if they can get this tier one as well, uh, it's going to be perfect for this Midas timing. Yeah, so while well, Black's died a couple of times, I mean, I think the overall trade-off with how well Jabs is doing in the Storm, uh, as well as the Nature's Prophet getting those kills, and Queen of Pain dying, you know, the yeah, big picture-wise. Yeah, big kills. Yeah, it's going well, and immediately he respawns Metamorphosis, it was still up, so it allows him to pressure this bottom tier 1 tower. Whether or not he can take it, we'll have to wait and see. Ice 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 in the neighborhood means it's quite likely they can get this tier 1. Yeah, very hard for EG to stop this sort of play at the moment. There'll be a charge onto Crit as well. Let's see if they're able to go in and how far Crit comes forward. Faces maintaining their uh, position around it. They'll take the tower. More money to the bank of the Nature's Prophet. Already level 5 and a bit on Warlock at 8 minutes in. Often you're seeing these Warlocks rely on like that 10 minute tomb, but Faces has done a really good job distributing the farm, the XP. Spirit Breaker's just finding kills for the team. He's the underleveled one, but that's fine. Like the level 6 timing on Spirit Breaker is nice. It's a nice bit of boost in damage and lockdown, but the early rock synergizes well oh, with meta. Black once again though on this bottom lane. And uh, will catch him out. Trying to keep him alive here with the shadow word here. It's not enough. EG with the RP in the horn. Do get the kill. Maybe even more here as Arteezy continues to chase down nuts. And yeah, with a Crystal Nova slow from Crit coming across the tree line. They'll get it. The charge will be on Tartor under the tower, but the Frostbite holds back XY. Oh, another nature's profit. Oh, oh, the mid the with the fatal points. <laughs> oh my Ooh. goodness. Ice 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 landing some beautiful bounces here. Casting at just the right point so that damage builds up. That's so much gold. That's a solo kill. He gets <laughs> filthy rich off of that. I, I can't remember the last time I saw a nature's draft just be that impactful at nine minutes in twice oh. so far. Where, he, where he's done it and he's got these big kills. The two points in Fatal Bonds, that, that was actually insane. He's going to rush a mech for his team, so it, as much as uh, the greed is there, but Ice yeah. Success is a player that really likes to kind of apply pressure, play super aggressive, and the mech gives him that capability. For sure, yeah. He's really pulling out the team playing. and In game two and game three, you know, game one, this team was probably like, mate, don't do that again. No <laughs> more of that brute trouble. stuff. 
And top lane will be bursted down as Samel jumps forward with the Sonic Wave. Can they get themselves another? Nuts is looking for the Duke in the tree line. Uh, isn't going to make it though. RTZ cuts through. They should be able to find him. I mean, he's trying his best <laughs> with this fancy footwork. But with a dagger on him. Now taken down, EG. Again, getting another kill for Arteezy. So even though Arteezy was taken down two times, he is consistently getting himself involved in the action. Yep. A very kind of chaotic game already. Ten minutes in, seven for five. A lot of kills going on. Jabs being eyed up by Zai in the mid lane. The EG do have four members in the neighborhood. Rune coming up. Will he drop the remnant? He does. Uh, the smoke screen down and the tricks of the trade. Have they got enough damage to bring him out? They do. With the frostbite, they'll find it. And they're going to look for another. XY taken down as well as Zai. Jumps forward with the blink strike. Great bait. Zai, Nature's Prophet, <laughs> These doesn't really want to TP in yet. Bringing them low, but yeah, the Shrine is ready. EG will be able to kick themselves back up. So ballsy blinking from Sumail, just going straight onto a rune. Putting your blink on cooldown and relying on the Ricky for the smoke support, and it, it was enough, so EG. Get the result they're looking for in key kills, because this early game was not going... They're up on kills, but before I think that... that Double kill at the top room right there. I think things were looking overall a lot better for Faceless despite losing their Terror Blade a couple of times. Black has resorted to having to jungle farm, but the Nature's Prophet start and the Storm start was definitely a concern, but that does slow down Jabs' progression towards the Bloodstone. Suzai and uh, Crit moving across the jungle of Faceless mid lane. Jabs will be joined by Ice 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 for another tier 1 push. And uh, we'll see if EG can do anything Courier. in response to stop it. Yeah, the Courier. Ooh, the Jukes. Ooh. That Orb of Venom bringing it down to 1 HP. Oh, keeping it alive here. Charge from XY. Looking for Crit. Black's there as well. Crit will hold it back with the Frostbite. They'll pop the Horn here. Chaotic Offering actually dropped as well by Nuts as they're really looking to try and go in on this CM. They'll zip forward. Crit. Gets himself up to the shrine. Do they have the damage to bring him down through the regen? No, because Universe is there with the RPL to do it. The freezing field. Oh, it's a beautiful bait by Crit. Bringing faces up to this high ground. Crit, he might even survive, and he does. He walks it off. Oh, they got massively baited there, Faceless. Walking yeah. into the, the easiest RP of Universe's life. Some questionable plays. Perhaps an understatement. Faceless just... I mean, they, they did get baited, but I feel like it was... Less credit to Crit for baiting and more credit to Faceless for just diving in into a shrine. Blindly into the high ground. Dropping a rock on a crystal maiden. That, that, that's the most baffling play. That that Kerak offering was not the, the timing that Nuts wanted to use it for. Damn. That was just the crystal maiden. And the haunt, the haunt literally spooked them. They were like, oh crap, he's using haunt. It's a team fight. Yeah, too that, spooky for me. That was just the haunt illusion with a crystal maiden that was caught by the rock. So... They don't even kill the CM, but that's the thing. Like, you're dropping the rock in a CM and not even having the damage to kill her off. Like, yeah, Crit's going to feel pretty good after that. Yep. Yeah, that's one of those real big confidence boosts. <laughs> if you're EG, you're just like, man, sweet. This game's going great now. Yeah, those four kill. I mean, but, but Ice 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 Cosmos was involved in the action. He got his mech complete, so still this very good timing on the Nature's Profit. But yes. as we see on the net worth, the, the three heroes beneath him, all on the side of EG, thanks to that last team fight that Faceless just kind of fed them on a silver platter. And often you see like a big RP and a haunt used like that. You want to take advantage of the timing. But similarly, Faceless, they've also got these long ulti cooldowns. Metamorph and Rock both both use. So the downtime of the ult, like after a big team fight, if both teams use ultimates, it's you. all you can do is really farm. And for EG, that's fine. They got Spectre going for Radiance. Uh, they don't really mind too much. And when their ultis come back up, they're the ones who have the farm advantage and they're winning these fights. Yeah, we'll see what they can do in terms of s slowing down <coughs> RTZ. And so at the moment, as you said, looking to, to close in. Halfway through, nearly towards the Relic. Mid lane, Zai. He's getting some vision here behind the tower with his positioning. Samael, looking to finish off the tier one. But face this R there in the neighborhood. Ready to slow him down and stop him. RTZ. Actually got Universe and Zai with him. They, they go for a kill onto Ice Ice Ice. The dagger's out upon him. They'll drop the RP for this one. Make sure that they get the solo kill. And he's pretty big. He's, he's pretty tanky mech. with the mech. And in fact, yeah. it's, it's going to be enough. He survives. The turn up from Jabs to try and force them back. XY continues with the charge through onto the Magnus. RTZ will be able to get himself out to safety with the horn. And it looks like no one ends up going down. But yeah, I mean, that mech, it, he was just too tanky. Three of them going in, dropping the RP. I thought they'd have enough damage, but they, they didn't. Without even, yeah, popping it. He's just all the yeah. extra stats and... 
runs away, gets the T. There was actually a storm smoke gank headed up top. Unfortunately for Faceless, the the fight happened when they weren't close enough to back up. Ice, ice, ice. Storm did ball in, but he balled in from so far that he had no real mana to chase further. And the Warlock couldn't get off any of his spells, so it wasn't quite the outcome they hoped for with the smoke not getting any kills, but yeah, zero for zero trade. And, and uh, yeah, it was what the blink reveal as well on the Magnus. Yes. Tower down. So, I mean, that's the, the one thing Faces have going for them. They're doing a much better job, and that's the nature of their line, but taking objectives. Between the Nature's Prophet and the Terror Blade, they're constantly getting oh, towers. Look at this initiation here with the charge. Though is smoke screen to stop it. Though jabs taken down by the trick. The train, the freezing field from Crip. Brilliant takes down too. What a smoke screen. That was beautiful. With the placement there from Zai stopping the Nether Strike coming out. If that Nether Strike comes out on Queen of Pain. It was very likely a dead Queen of Pain. That's a male actually. I'm gonna get aggressive on our side size. He's gonna continue the TP though. There's no way for Samal to stop him. And will get out, still keeping himself at the top, but EG keeping their three cores close behind the Nature's Prophet. Radiant Again, with Black, he needs he needs space, he needs time to step up the farm because at the moment he's he's not where they need that Terra Blade to be. Yep. And RTZ 2.1k still still on the road to that Radiance. And that's a timing which I think Faces want to try and beat. Like they want to at least take a few more towers, take some fights around their key ulties, the Metamorph, the the Rock. The me the fast mech, like this is these are not items they're getting to try and play the farm game with directly. Like, yeah, they've got one minus on the nature's profit. They're likely going to go for a second on a hero like a warlock, but they do not want to give EG room to. Uh, let's see if to they get away with it this time. Ice, 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 surrounded. Sprout so crit uh, with the three of them there, four of them. I think that as well as I comes in for the kill secure. These pickups really hurt faceless because they want to be grouping up and five man pushing. That was their success in game two. They managed to five man down a lot of towers and. Feels like they've slipped back into some of their game one weaknesses, which is ice, 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 off alone, trying to split push, trying to do like solo plays and getting caught out. That was where their short, that was their shortcomings with the brood game, and it's coming back a bit in game number three. I think he's waiting for his team to group up as four and push a lane so he can TP in. And while he's waiting and pushing out a lane by himself, he's EG are just playing faster. Like they're getting to ice, ice, ice before the other four faceless members actually get in position to push a lane. And I think the other four members are oh. trying to get farm on terribly. And here, yep. yet again, you know, Have Universe just not holding back with the RPZ. He sees a big solo kill potential. He'll drop it. And yeah. Getting Black, keeping him, you know, a step behind RTZ. So Absolutely the play to make. I think there's, yeah, a lot to be learned from just how he's so proactive in yeah. using RP whenever possible. It's such a change from what we saw from, like, jabs in game one where it felt like 10, 15, 20 minutes went by and RP wasn't used. Just throw it. Kill a core hero. Kill a support if you have to. Like, wh whatever. Just use that spell... When it's up, especially when you've got a big farming carry to back it up, it's space created for Arteezy or a kill created. Arteezy comes in with the haunt, helps get the kill, and very easy setup. As Faces will now try and respond and react there. Grouped up around this mid lane, Black will be the bait slash the hero to push it out. They can force this tier 2 tower, and I don't actually know how easily EG can defend without the haunt and without the RP. This may just be a situation where they have to give up some ground to Faceless. Yeah, awesome L coming forward. Would it be a nice focus for Faces to go on, but at the same time, respecting the potential yeah. backup that he has. <clears throat> now they'll go in with the charge. They've got the control with the Nether Strike as well. Beautiful lockdown. Oh, no, they didn't get the touch in time. Samael gets out of it. Yep. And now Jabs is in trouble. He zipped in without, without any more mana. It looks like he, he will be fine though, still with a backup. Samael jumps down, takes the rune out from under his nose, but not killing Samael there. So close. Yeah. Kind of stacked the charge and the vortex. But I think that's because Jabs felt like the charge wasn't going to land. He could blink before the charge hits if he reacted incredibly fast. It looked like the charge was going to hit. And as a result, losing that little bit of extra stun. Oh, Samael, he's them. got a sonic wave. He may play for the solo kill here. He's thinking about it. Uh, the heal might be enough to put him off, and it looks like it is. Uh, Realizes Nuts is there. Has Chaotic Offering as well, so somehow not wanting to blink into a potential turnaround. Now enough time's gone by that RP comes back up. Universe is ready to use it again. Stupendous. Ricky is going to be the hero to try and scout out those RP opportunities, and things continue to go well for EG. They've really had this uncontested phase of the game, and this is before Radiance even comes up. Ortiz is going to have that Radiance momentarily. He's farming incredibly fast. The Magnus is fighting him, giving him the Empower. 
He's stacking neutral camps as well for him. They're really doing a good job of playing around the fact that Arteezy needs some space to be effective this game. And again, we see Zai scouting out. Oh, oh able to deward the deward attempt from Nuts, but he's got the second sentry. Yep. And uh, this time we'll be able to secure a control around this area. And Nuts knows there's a, a ward on top yeah. there because there's no other way Ricky has the high ground vision there to decentry, but won't be able to get it right away. And EG are ready to take a fight. They've got Radiance. Yeah, coming out on the Courier. Radiance is good to go. Radiance Likely we'll see four heroes group up mid, try and take a fight. Arteezy farm some neutrals and then haunt in. Very difficult for faces right now. It's very hard to get off a good Chaotic Offering when Spectre can so easily kill the Warlock. It's going to force you to almost drop a early rock that's going to be too premature. It's just going to be almost wasted if you want to throw it out just to save yourself or to just throw it before you die to a Spectre Haunt. And of course that charge vortex combo between the breaker and the, the storm isn't gonna quite cut it against Samael anymore. He has the Lincoln Sphere complete, so he's yep. gonna be that little uh, extra bit slippery uh, to take control of and black. Is he gonna get found? No, uh, they find us. They'll go for nuts first, make sure that he doesn't get a chance to get off the carry off and they just do it quick in case he drops it. And they, they will be able to bring him down very, very swiftly. I don't mean one if he dropped it there it would have probably been a big yeah, big, guess, big Yeah, mistake. there's no one else around. Yeah. I mean, sure. He had a, the TB there, but that was not a fight they want to take. Cut your losses, hold on to your rock, and try and take a team fight somewhere else because they are they're gonna they've seen the radiance now. They're probably thinking, oh geez, Arteezy, I thought we didn't we trialing this guy, and nope, oh, he's got a 20 minute radiance on his spectre and continuing to farm at this bottom lane. Crit's got his Midas on Crystal Maiden. He's been able to get away with this, so he'll farm a fast glimmer cape. Just get some utility items now. Midas gonna be the the pick up for Universe, so I think EG recognizing they're they're definitely securing the late game with these Midas pickups, and they don't. There's no additional items like Magnus has Blink Uppy. That's that's what he needs, and nothing else for like, like at least like the next ten minutes of this game. So you can easily get away with this Midas. And it really feels uh, kind of as you mentioned earlier that Ice Ice Ice, even with the farm and the lead that he has, and uh, there's obviously very nice kills that he got early on. It's it slowed down what he's been able to do at, yeah. at this point. He he got the mech. He's not really been in a situation or a team fight to use it. Um, uh, he's looking for the Bloodthorn. Uh, he's got 4k on his way towards it. But the pace yeah. has really slowed down for Faceless. And as you mentioned, it just feels like that favors this Radiant Spectre. Yeah, even though Black has died a lot more in the Terror Blade, I feel like Nature's Prophet's death oh, had been more costly. The smoke screen is just a disastrous setup for this Storm Spirit. Ripping jabs to pieces and ready to look for more. Crit will be caught out by the Reflection. Black. Looking to bring down Arteezy with the Golem chopping into him as well, but Universe comes through with the RP. EG once again getting a fourth, maybe getting a fifth, and they do. The Sonic Wave comes through, no chance for a Sunder. Got blocked with the, the Lincoln's pickup. Queen of Pain, not afraid of no Sunder, and a full team wipe. Not that is, yeah. A single disaster. kill. Disaster. I mean, this series so far, it's, it's been kind of back and forth, but this game now, 23 minutes in. It's looking very hard for face this very early on. Yeah, they've missed some of their timings, haven't been able to really play around the meta plus Karak offering push, and I think a lot of credit this game goes to, to Zai finding so many key kills. His smoke screen usage has been fantastic. He's been a big reason that they've been able to secure kills on heroes like Terra Blade. It just destroys, I mean, the storm, yeah, it just yeah. destroys jabs. He, he's got no answer for it at all. And it's not like he's a hero that's going to be building anything that's going to give him an answer to the nope. smoke screen. Get some four staff storm spirit action going. Probably not, probably I mean, not I, mean the build. I guess you'd be getting your team to just build yeah. yourself something like that, but that's no one in a position to do so. So Jabs is unless they, they've got to have vision of the Zai. Yeah, they've <laughs> got to get Zai out of the fights before yeah. they go for them. That's when you know things. Uh, your drafts in a weird place if your spirit breaker has queued up a four staff in his uh, quick buy area. Not a hero you'd ever really expect to buy this item, but hey, you, you need you need a full stuff somewhere. Yeah. You've perhaps, got to save whoever gets smoke screen. Perhaps Nature's Prophet could have gone for it, but I think Isis Ice is like, I'm the only hero with farm. I need I need carry items and goes Orchid, he's gonna go some DPS this game. We'll see how that works for him, but that's that's really a big problem right now, is lack of damage and still got like I mean if you fight with meta and get like a good rock off, things could could go faces his way. I mean, they're definitely cl close to a couple of key kills there, but EG just have such a big team fight. RP, Horn, Sonic Wave is just brutal right now, and it's hard to really talk about Metamorphosis as a big team fight spell when Black has limited items to back it up. 
Storm Spirit has has a Bloodstone, which is nice, but hasn't got massive follow-up potential out of that, uh, outside of that. So tough game for Faceless now. And, and it, the fights that they have to find these fights if they want to hope to catch up with the the Spectre. I mean, closing that gap between the Terrorblade and the Spectre now at this stage. When RTZ pretty much has the Manta done as well, it's going to be incredibly hard unless they can find these team fights with a good chaotic offering. But we, we look at what we've seen so far, and you look at the, the tools that EG have, uh, they just have more in, in terms of AoE team fight. The, the Freezing Field, Sonic Wave, RP, faces, they are going to go for a smoke, jabs, looking for the initiation straight in onto Universe, making sure it's hard for him to get off a good RP, he still gets it off, and that's going to be enough to kill the Storm Spread, double kill for Samael as he comes through with the Sonic Wave, Crit will fall in return, Black doing quite a lot of it with the Metamorphosis, is it going to be enough, falling low, but he doesn't get it off in time, he's down, Samael survives with the triple kill, RTZ still alive, Samael just cleaning up the back lines, picks up an Ultra, he'll pick up a Tier 1 to boot as well. Samael just starting across the mall. Ice 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 comes in with jabs. They're looking for Samael. It's a huge kill if they can get it, but they can't. He blinks out jabs. Still trying to zip and find it. Samael, will he go down? He finally does. It's a big kill to find. That's a dieback though, Odie Pixel. Yeah, that and was... Jabs is probably going to go down as well as RTZ oh, and Zai chase him down. A storm gone as well. That's seven deaths on Faceless, including buyback money from Ice Ice Ice's nature's problem. That's... It's tough. Not, I mean, they, they killed some mail, but it, as you yeah. said, it, it takes quite a bit to kill that man when he's having a good game, and he's, he's having a good game, he's having a good series. Some mail has been incredibly stable uh, in this series, Yep. and uh, his Queen of Pain performance is no outlier. 13-3-8. Went all in on the Magnus there, and they killed the Magnus before the RP, great. Not sure if Storm... No, he's still, he's still got the RP off. Yeah, he's still oh, got the RP like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if there was a smoke on the Storm there. I couldn't quite tell, but... Or if he just didn't get the ball. Like, he, ideally, he's trying to ball lightning dodge the RP. If you constantly ball lightning when you're on top of him, he, he can't really RP because you can dodge it, but... Universe wins that battle Ooh. there, and Jabs goes down, and... I mean, that was the uh, dream time to fly for Faceless. You know, you've got this... 12 Bloodstone Chad Storm, he's going to have a very short respawn. You're happy for him to ball in, fully commit, die, and then come back and ideally Storm, like, you kind of know the Storm's going to die there. He's putting himself in such a deep position against, like, Spectre, Quop, Smokescreen from Ricky, Frostbite, but you're hoping that he can set up the TB and the, the Nature's Prophet to do a lot, and then when he respawns, he wins you the fight, but they couldn't get kills elsewhere. Terrorblade doesn't, again, two fights in a row, couldn't get off a good Sunder. It's so key for Black because there's so much AoE damage. He's always getting low in these fights. He has to get Sunder off to stay alive. But all these heroes are Queen of Pain, has a Lincoln, they're pretty good at kiting. Magnus has Blink and Full Staff. Ricky goes Invis. Spectre can be pretty elusive. It's not easy to find a, a Sunder target. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy. More than halfway towards Diffusal Blade as well. And, uh, well, Ricky, Zai, pretty much has his done. I mean, he's the recipe to go. And things looking very sketchy for Faces now, 27 minutes in. Sometimes, you know, the kills don't really tell the story, but this game, it certainly feels like they do. 31 to 7. And uh, the lead in terms of goal certainly apparent as well. Zai will be going on. A quick tricks of the trade. He'll survive. And in fact, Jabs could be in trouble. The Chaotic Offering will be there to hold them back. Jabs dips back in again. The smoke screen still there has to be careful. The Horn coming through. Universe in the midst of it all. The RP lands on to three. Getting faceless. Caught down. And now as two are out, XY will charge back and he's looking for Zai, will get the Ricky kill, but Universe again turns around with the Shockwave, picks a third, RTZ's there to clean up a fourth. And once again, Faceless are just having to throw a full team, just getting one kill. This time it's not even Samel, it's only poor old little Zai. Mm. EG just have gotten this lead that they're not afraid to play aggressive around. They aren't scared of the rock. They they recognize that Faces have a formidable team fight, but they've just got such a big item advantage. Tumel's at this point where he's incredibly tanky. He's over 2k HP. He's got that level 20 HP talent. He went plus 10 strength as well at level 10. He gets a lot of bonus survivability through his talents, not to mention his item build. Lincoln's Veil, he gets extra armor, extra HP, spell block. He is such a great frontliner to have. And as a result, it's very difficult for Faceless to actually win these team fights despite having Warlock, TB. I mean, that, that's really it. At this point, their team fight looks lack, lackluster. There's a haunt up. There's no way you win those team fights. Manta defusal for a TZ. This guy is, yeah, he's, he's way too far now. 
and this is really a point as well where it, it, the game becomes very hard, not just for the team, but specifically like X, Y, Spirit Break. I mean, what do you do in these situations? I mean, we, we did see him obviously guarantee the kill at the end for on Zai, yeah. but every move he's going to make is is going to feel very suicidal jumping into this lineup of EG. It's going to try and yeah, dive onto the disablers, someone like a Ricky, if you can stop a smoke coming out into your storm, stop a frostbite, stop an RP. That's kind of his, his goal is to just be disruptive. Try and stun as many heroes as possible with the charge through because that's what's going to be able to set up Black to do as much damage as possible with Metamorph. Zion's being charged. Jabs and Ice 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 there, quick to find the kill. Okay. At the same time in the mid lane though, it looks like Black's being jumped. Universe in with the RP. Black no chance to play his way out of that one with the silence coming in as well. And Samael. And down for 50 seconds. They don't have the TB. One of the forces that they need is not even a very strong one at that at this stage. A bottom lane, EG ready to try and move across for more kill after kill. As uh, XY losing his life. So 37 to 9, 30 minutes in. It's looking to be quite the beat down here in this final game three. Yeah, Samuel's just, he's showing up here. He's queen of pain. Always been one of his kind of signature heroes and not exactly a hero you see much in competitive at the moment, but there's anyone who can make it work. It is Sumail and the whole EG team have really, they're, they're looking like the tier one team that I think people expected them to, to be at this tournament. They're often team talked about, oh, they're, they're slow to start. They have yeah. bad day ones, they have bad group stages. Well, this is, this is much more like it. It did take them a couple of series to get yeah. through, but they're, <laughs> game, they're, they're back there now. Game three of their second series of the day, but you know, they're, they're there. And it's always like an adjustment period. You don't know what the metagame's going to be. You have some strats in mind that you think are going to work, but in practice, they may not be as strong as you think they are until you're playing tournament play. And you're versing opponents who you don't quite know what they're going to do. Like TNC was a very dangerous round one opponent. Faceless, another kind of volatile SEA team who have some very high ups and some low lows, but... We've seen that in this series, and EG, though, proving through uh, a lot of their experience to be the better team right now. Looking for the smoke play onto Samael. Tough wow, Can kill. they get him? He's already blinking away. Can't initiate. Like, you can't charge him, can't nether strike, no. can't orc at him. This Lincoln's block is just very pesky. Uh, Jabs does have a BKB now. So there is that answer to the smoke Ooh. cloud. Not the optimal light for a storm spirit, but definitely something that uh, is, he's just been forced to build this game. And they're actually gonna find Universe. Universe quick with the force, tries to go for the skew out. In response, the horn comes through Universe. Oh, he gets the RP, they just walked into it. The Sonic Wave as well. Jabs falling low, he's still trying to move across to finish off Universe, but they've lost two. They're gonna lose Black as well. Three down on Faceless, and Universe, he survives. He gets out, they turn, they kill Jabs. It's a fourth down. And yet again, this is Ooh. just a, a public beatdown for Faceless that they are receiving 41 to 9. Yet another team fight absolutely lost. Down to just three Bloodstone charges. It's hard, but you've, you've got to be able to at least ball lightning that RP sometimes. And that's like two, three in a row that the ball lightning dodge hasn't been there with. And... Universe is just like, oh, you jump me, I'm just going to throw my RP and hope it hits the Storm, and time and time again it's hitting the Storm Spirit. And EG will take a, feels like a fairly fast rack. So still 33 minutes in, but boy, uh, e yeah, EG is just dominating right now. Uh, you know it's potentially over when the Ricky says I'm building an Axe. Zai <laughs> feeling uh, that it doesn't really matter what he builds. I mean, I guess it's, it's still kind of cool. You jump in our toy haunts around. It gives you a free taxi ride. The jump in, though, from Jabs. Looking to fight. They'll get the bash onto the CM. Glimmer caked up. XY looks There's for another strike. Yet. Universe jumps forward. Has the skewer onto the Storm. And Jabs is down for 60 seconds. XY's out as well. Again, 4-5. This time, the full team white. And they'll tap out. It's enough. FL, they can't take any more of this as EG with the beatdown that I think EG fans will have been waiting to see from them. Uh, they finally got it here in this final game of the, of the day, and they'll take the series 2-1, of course, thanks to that. Yeah, that's a reassuring win, I think, for the EG fans out there who looked at EG as probably one of the top contenders here in Kiev and probably felt like, oh, it's a slow start. Are they going to bounce back? Well, yeah, this is absolute stomp from EG. They From the, from the get-go, they had a 